Mr. Clower. Hi, Mr. Clower. We read the Ramayana by R.K. Narayan, and there's countless versions of this epic, but his is just a shortened version of it. Um, Caitlin also found out that it was made into two TV shows, two series. And there's a bunch of different versions. Um, and it's basically a story about Rama's way or the life of Rama. And it has a lot of Indian mythology and ties with the Mahabharata and mutual themes that I saw. And it was just a really interesting story to read. And the way it was written was just so interesting, like the Mahabharata, and really detailed. And I just found it a really good book to read. Another thing that I want to mention about the comparison of the Mahabharata and the Ramayana was how in the Ramayana, um, R.K. Narayan did a bunch of individual stories on characters rather than just throwing them all out at the beginning. And it was super confusing in the Mahabharata. And um, I just found it a lot easier to understand all the characters and put them to the story in the Ramayana. Um, we could also talk about characters and, um, the main character is Rama, obviously, he's the hero of the whole story. Um, he's an incarnation of the god Vishnu, and he's married to Sita, and their marriage is definitely not by common culture of our day. And we saw that in a few of the other books that we read. Some of the characters would just come up to others and um, and just ask yeah. to be married. And I, f I feel like I asked that one of the first discussions and if in that culture it was normal. And it's so weird yeah. how in different cultures it is normal in, in this Another story. Another thing I noticed about their marriage was it's kind of like a spoiler but um I thought it was really weird that Sita like although she didn't know that Rama was her gonna be her husband at the time she had these feelings for him because of their marriage and their past life um she was feeling like sick and not like herself as soon as she saw Rama but she didn't know why and I think that's super strange that they don't know who they were in a past life, but they still have, like, the feelings that the people in the past life did. So I thought that was super weird that Rama was the one that could shoot the bow to win Sita. Yeah. I found that really interesting, too. And also, in the Mahabharata, it's a lot of, um, going with the Indian mythology, a lot of, like, divine power. So the gods played a huge part in... In the Mahabharata and also in the Ramayana, the gods were always the ones to, to determine everything. And there were always, like, conspiracies about, if you do this, the gods are going to affect you. Yeah. And that was seen in the Ramayana also, along with the Mahabharata. And also in a few other books. I think in the um, Blood Merchant, it was also saying that the gods are going to harm you if you do this. or Yeah. So I found that, that interesting. That also ties in with the theme about how they have a fate. They have a certain fate like set to them, and there's no way that they can change it. What they desire isn't what they're actually going to end up having. So Exactly. And then I saw that um, in connection to Thousand Cranes when... Um, when he didn't want to be like his family, he didn't want to be like his father or his mother, but his fate was to be like them and to do the things that his family did. And I feel like Rama's fate was to be with Sita and to rule um, over his kingdom. And he got swayed multiple times. Rama was swayed by a few things, and, um, he, but everyone really has a fate in the story, and what's, their fate is what's meant to be, 
But the gods did sway them also. In the story. I kind of... Wait, maybe you know, Caitlin, but I kind of have a question about, like, reincarnation. Reincarnation. Mm -hmm. Um... When the pe when people are reincarnated, are they also like? Do they have the same like similarities as the person they are reincarnated for from? Do I you think know or I think so. And then when I was I was researching that, and I found that um. So when someone is reincarnated, they're. Uh -huh. They can be reincarnated as a person or as something else, so like a snake or yeah, something else, but they can only be killed or like swayed when they're in human form. So the, I found that really interesting because Rama was in human form and he was able to be swayed. But what was your question again? Well, because when Sataka... Tataka's sons, when Rama killed both of them, mm -hmm. and they were, like, they're demon, like, devil gods, are they reincarnated into, like, god, like, demons again, or can they be reincarnated into, like, a good person? Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not sure. I think... I'm not sure. That's really interesting. Maybe Mr. Clower can let us know if yeah. that's a thing. <laughs> um, but... There are many different themes that I found in this story. And one of them was marriage, as we talked about. So, it was just not like common culture. Like, nowadays you have to get to know people and then you will eventually get married. But it just seems really informal, in my yeah, opinion. The, the fact that he got his wife just from, like, picking up a bow, shooting the arrow... Although, like, no one else could do it. I feel like he could do it because in their past life, he was married to her. Yes, exactly. And that's yeah. so interesting. And then, um, so family. I found family to be a really big part of the story also. Yeah. So, Rama and his three brothers... They're all pretty close, except when one of his brothers tries to take the kingdom. But that was set up by the stepmother, so I guess it wasn't really... Oh, his another fault. thing that I really liked was when Lakshmana, when um, Rama was being sent to exile, Rama didn't want him to go. Rama didn't want Sita to go, but they insisted that they come with him. And I think that's a big thing of family. Like, yeah. Being in the forest for 14 years where there's danger and they're bound to be faced by a devil god. I just thought it was cool that, like, Sita and his um, his brother Lakshmana insisted that they go with him, no matter him not wanting them to. Yeah, that, that was really interesting. And then also, when Sita goes, I found that to be really interesting too because they were basically married at the time so they were basically family too by yeah. marriage so I found that really interesting and I also found a quote I'll come back to the quote when I find it but it was basically a quote saying how they are family but there's some things that they have to do Sometimes you have to go through hard times and betrayal with your family to get through to the good times. Uh -huh. And it seemed like Rama didn't have very many good times in this story. But, um, I, I'll there find was a, it. Uh, this is kind of like off topic, but I just remembered in my notes, um, they talk about the Ganga, the river a lot. And that was in the movie Water. It was also in the, was it in the Maharata? Caitlin? I think it might have been. The Holy River, like, yeah. traveling through and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. I like seeing when there's, like, similarities in the books. So yeah. and I got I, excited when I saw that. And I remember from the Mahabharata, water was a huge theme in that book also. Because yeah. when they were, they were exiled, when the brothers were exiled, when it was raining, that was a huge part. And it like a sign of grace, basically, in the Mabarta. Yeah. So that was interesting. That's 
That's cool that you bring that up because I remember that from the Mahabharata also. Well, when I read it, I was so excited because I remember Mr. Clower telling us about the river and it was also in another reading, but he explained most of it when we read Water about how it's so like super holy and yeah. that they were in, them, in there bathing themselves and it's still like considered holy and anyone who touches it or it touches is yeah like blessed from it. Yeah. And then, um, so I just found it really interesting that Rama does have such power. And I, I find it like so cool that he's able to do basically break the bow to earn her. Yeah. And then he, that's a sign of like his power that he has from the gods. And, I just found that really interesting. He has such power. Um, oh, I found the quote. So, the part that we were talking about um, with his brothers and everything. So, basically, his stepmother wanted his uh, brother to be the ruler of the kingdom instead of Rama. And that just shows just kind of selfishness and I just found a quote that matches with the Mahabharata also with clashing between brothers so it says in a world where we are accustomed to rivalries over possession authority and borders and people clashing over issue ours or mine not ours so I found it interesting that the stepmother would want the one of the sons to rule over Rama just for selfish reasons and for them for ours or mine not for ours or mine not yours yeah so, she only wanted him to be ruler so that she could be in power too, yes like with him yes yeah and I so Although family is a huge part of the story, I just found it interesting that there's also, like, a clash between families, which is involved in the Mahabharata also. Yeah, I think another thing that's cool is um, they have stepmothers. All of Rama's brothers are not his brothers, but um, they're, like, half-brothers, stepbrothers. So I think it's really interesting that he has two moms. He has stepbrothers, like, all that. And they still, like, consider them family. Yeah. Um, well, obviously. And, um, hold on, that's a phone. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I just found this this book to be really, really interesting. And um, Caitlin, two minutes left. Okay. And um, with the family theme that we were talking about, family was a huge mm -hmm. theme in all of the stories that I think we read. And um. What could we, we could talk about? I feel like we mentioned everything, just not in a very, like, detailed. Oh, another thing that I thought was interesting was that the the monkey people that they talk about when he was exiled, how they help him and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that he rewrote it as, like, monkey people's virtues and values are the same as humans. Mm -hmm. And that's super interesting because even in studies today, like, chimpanzees share... 98% of our DNA and are very similar to us. So mm -hmm. I think it's cool that that's mentioned in the Indian epic. Yeah. <laughs> kind of random, but... Yeah, that... that I saw that also. That was really interesting. Yeah. And... 
Um, another quote, another, um, not really quote, but theme that I found was that truth always wins. Um, Kai Kai went and tried to do things that weren't like destined to happen. And she ended up not getting her way. So she tried to force Baratha into like rulership and yeah. it didn't happen because they knew that it wasn't the right thing to be. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, I really enjoyed reading the book. and Me too. I really liked it. The whole class has been really, really exciting and really fun. And, and I learned so much about something I never thought I would. Yes. And so interested about something I never thought I would be interested yeah. in. So it was a really great class, and we really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.